This is Political Junkies with Brian Howie and London Thomas. Hi, everybody. It's Brian Howie. Welcome back to Political Junkies, the podcast for those hooked on politics. We are coming to you from Las Vegas. It is so hot here in Las Vegas. You people are nuts living here because you can, like... Burn your hand on a car handle. My flip flops melted the other day. It's terrible. Joining me, uh, as always, and as preferred, global traveler, music icon, reformed liberal, proud conservative, fighting hard out of Atlanta. And even when he's wrong, he's mostly right. London Thomas, how are you? Great. Good to see you, Brian. See, there's Atlanta heat here. and there's Vegas heat. Two different types of heat. Two different heats. Yeah. Uh, the Vegas, the, the Atlanta heat when it is when it is bad. Yeah. It's about as bad as it gets. It's oppressive. It is. But the Vegas heat is dangerous. It's scorching. Because <laughs> you could crazy. you could touch the wrong like you thing at the wrong time in the wrong way. I got in John's car just touching the handle of the door. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. People like oh, I think I can make it to the pool. It's 10 feet, and then they they halfway there, and they don't know whether to keep going or to, or to back off. Just going from the hotel um, valet to yeah. the front door, which yeah. is literally it, five feet it is, in the shade. It is I'm hot. I'm up. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so we're, we're uh, here to talk about some hot things, but um, I want to bring her right in. She's coming to us um, remotely. She's uh, today's guest on the left, even though she's probably not that far on the left. She's a Renaissance woman. She's a mom, she's a wife, she's a manager, she's a badass, and most importantly for our purposes today, she's a California girl. Heidi Liddell, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I want to start there with today's big hit. You know, for years, the reputation that California had was, it was like a giant carpet, <clears throat> and at some point, somebody grabbed the East Coast shook it really hard, and all the wacky people tumbled down to California, <laughs> including me. Um, I was there for all, a while, right, too. And all the crazies moved down to the Pacific. And now a lot of people are rethinking California, what it is, what it means, where is it going. So I'm going to start with you, Heidi. Are you optimistic about California? Because the reason that I bring up California is because if California doesn't get it right and get it right soon... The rest of the country is going to get a whole bunch of Californians moving that way, and they already are. So, um, California definitely needs to get it right soon, and <laughs> I have lived here most of my life. Um, I love California. Uh, it's like one of the most beautiful places to live, I think, in the world. Um, we have everything here. Um, every terrain you can imagine you can get to within, you know, a couple hours. If you want to go to the beach and surf and, and you want to go ski in the mountains and, you know, um, like go to the desert, you can do all of that. So one of the reasons I love, uh, being in California, it's just, it's beautiful. And there's just such a incredible, diverse mix of people here. And there's so much opportunity, like, Everyone comes into California to like live the American dream. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I'm from New York, but I've spent most of the last 15 years in in California. And you know, the thing people are like, what do you like most about California? And it's usually one, two, three: the weather, the weather, weather the weather, weather, the weather, the weather. and a lot of the other things that you, you. The weather was so nice, and the quality of life was so right. nice. You tend to tolerate you, everything you, you, else. You tolerate everything else. <laughs> yeah. Then I was watching the the PGA uh, Championship, the golf tournament, the other day. The guy won the tournament, which took place in San Francisco, and instantly lost fifty five percent of his two million dollar paycheck right off the top because it took place in California. Yeah. His two million dollar yeah, check was crazy. like not like right away, and I'm crazy. like. That shouldn't be like that. Um, thoughts on on California in general, and I lived there myself for about seven years, and I was there during the height of what we call Young Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So that was during the Paris Hilton, <laughs> yeah. Nicole Richie era. Yeah, and I think I caught the caught the tail end of th what John had told me before, uh -huh. or the people that were there before, of what Hollywood had to offer, and uh, I got. After a while, sick of the taxation, I got sick of uh, the lifestyle was good, mm -hmm. but the cost of living was just becoming out of reach. Then I started thinking about, you know, settling down. Right. I mean, to buy a home, to get a home. It, I mean, it, we it, saw ranch-style homes, one level, million dollars. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I would be taken, 
million dollars, million dollars. I'm like, you would have to go farther me. and farther from where you wanted to be yeah. to get that home, yeah. and it would take you longer and longer to, to get, get where work. you wanted to be because of, exactly. uh, of the traffic. Exactly. You know, um, where I have been for most of the, the last 15 years on the west side of Los Angeles on the beach, uh, it is a homeless community. Now. Marina, right? Uh, uh, Marina del Rey, yeah. but if you look at Santa Monica and Venice, it has. It has become the dominant force in that neighborhood. And that is one of the toughest problems we have in America. Amazing. No matter what city it is, what do, we, what do we do about it? The more services and help you give the homeless people, the more will come because it's too right. good. Yeah. And the more, yeah. the, the harder you make it, then you're really screwing over a lot of people. Um, Heidi, you're down in Orange County, correct? No, actually, I am in uh, the same neighborhood as Drake and um, Kylie. Calabasas? And Oh, you're in Calabasas. Yeah, I oh, you're, live in oh, you're Calabasas. Over the hills. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Calab Hidden Hills. And I'll tell you, the, you know, I remember that the homeless thing was like an issue when you would go to like Santa Monica and Venice and downtown. We have like homeless encampments right Stop. outside of our community as soon as oh, you yeah. get off the freeway. <laughs> oh, my and ever it's insane. You'll find wow. people. You can look over and see people doing horrible things and there's like trash everywhere and there's like the, crazy the crime around here is on the rise but it, it, normally it is. um you know people joke about our neighborhood and they say it's like trying to get into the white house because like you can't they give you such a hassle at the door you have to you have to show your driver's license that they, they scan your you know they get your license plate and they basically ask you everything about why you're there and what for but um we had some robberies in our area and we've had um you know people who rob cars rob houses like which has never it, it hasn't been an issue but it's now become an issue since amazing a lot it, of it, these laws and propositions that get passed which is one of the things that i don't like about california because of our um uh attorney general you he's supposed to be like helping us out and protecting us from the corrupt politicians but instead he's helping them write these propositions that are disguised as something else and yeah i know when we think we're voting we think we're doing something positive because we're looking at what it says but in all reality it's completely something else yeah the you know, um the adam carolla always made it made a really good point that the way the money is generated in Los Angeles County and a lot of California is they will tax and fine and uh, charge the shit out of the people who have the money and the people who don't have any money they're not going to bother with. So right. if you want to put up an awning on your business, they're going to charge you for permits, they're going to charge you for inspections, they're going to charge you for everything. Mm -hmm. But if, or if you're a soccer mom driving a van and you're a speeding ticket, that's who's going to get it. <laughs> but if you, right. th you know, oh, throw, a rock, yeah. throw, throw a rock through a window or if you vandalize, like... They're like, we can't waste time getting no. money out of these people. There, there's no money I'm going to get, so we're not going to chase them. So it, it's made it really bad to do business in California. It's really it's made it harm in terms of taxes. Just today, uh, Uber announced that um, they might have to shut down in California because they want all California wants all of the um, employees or to be classified as employees, all the drivers. Yeah. Uber's like, we can't afford that. They're like, oh, we're going to take some money out of Uber. Uber's like, we, we'll just shut down. They've gotten rid of the gig economy, the which gig is a economy. Huge yeah. part of not just Hollywood, but yeah. California and Los Angeles. Yep. And if you you take that away, people are gonna start, and they've already started looking to places like yeah. Austin and Nashville and Portland, where you don't have the income tax and you do have the opportunities. And the entertainment business is booming all over the place. I, you know, I don't know where we're going in terms of California. Even in Georgia, I don't know if you know about this, Brian, but I think our governor came out a few days ago, and he was inviting because you know we have a thriving. Uh, film industry yeah, in Georgia. There's incentives. Incentives. And mm -hmm. he was talking about Tyler Perry and what Tyler Perry had said, I think, recently about you know, law enforcement mm -hmm. and need, the need for it and just bringing in more of those dollars. It's kind of crazy. I, because I, I know. It, it's it, impossible to get anything done in the entertainment business in Los Angeles. No, you're right. You know, the, the, the TMZ, which is the 30 mile zone, it's beyond that now. It is cheaper and more uh, film and television is being yeah. done in Shreveport, Louisiana, yeah. and it's being done in Michigan, and yeah. it's being done in Wilmington, North Carolina. Tyler Perry has more real estate to shoot um, film and television yeah. than the Sony and Paramount Lots combined. It's amazing. And so, California, you know, 
I didn't have try to destroy the. I, I didn't try and destroy this on purpose. Right. I mean, I, what what else could it be? California had a, had this interesting situation where it had a booming entertainment business and a booming Silicon Valley. Right. Okay. So you had two parts of the state yeah. doing really well, and somewhere along the line, <laughs> it's fucked up. I don't <laughs> oh, understand that. Heidi, thoughts on any of that? Um. I mean, I think that it is the Democratic liberal leadership, and I think the leadership is corrupt. I think, um, you know, Governor Newsom is corrupt. I think Nancy Pelosi is. <laughs> I yeah. think um, Mayor Garcetti is. And I think that there's a lot of money there, but there's not a lot of transparency on where that money is going. But, there, but for sure, these people are becoming mega millionaires because they've been involved in running this country, this uh, state for so long, which yeah, is Dian, as big as a country. Diane you know, Feinstein uh, it's, it's 87 years old. You know, She's mummy. been a senator forever. I don't think a lot of people know this. Mayor Garcetti is the chairperson of Biden's presidential campaign. I didn't know of that. All of the times that I you're going to say, wow. I'm gonna, I, didn't yeah, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that you're realizing later. So he's going to take six months off, essentially, take this side gig at a time when Los Angeles falling is apart. Is Falling apart. You do not see a in in San Francisco or Los Angeles. You don't see a flat service without graffiti on it. Now you don't see a uh, any kind of underpass without a homeless person under it. You don't find a neighborhood that just doesn't smell like pot all the time. So pot's a different discussion, but <laughs> it does. You know, if, if you pay uh, eight million dollars for a house and you don't want that, right. it's a little bit of a challenge. So Garcetti for yeah. him to, to take a sure. side gig, and I'm like, I'm going to just be away for a while running a presidential campaign. I don't think that's what we voted for. Brian doesn't shock me, though. Yeah, I, I know. Say I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked when you told me that. Well, uh, you know, Surprise, as, as Heidi brought up a lot of the uh, the Democratic leadership, it did seem, though, on his um, third go-round, that Jerry Brown yeah. was sort of like, this is my last uh, hand. I don't need to play such games anymore, and mm. was doing a lot of good things that he probably wouldn't have done if he was up for re-election or whatever, right. and so he's like, I'm going to go, and it was in a pretty good position, sort of handed the torch over to Newsom, who was, who was not really uh, elected as much as uh, coronated. It was like, we knew for 10 years he was going to be the next governor, and now almost every step he makes is going the wrong direction. Or the, di yep. uh, the wrong direction, or <laughs> it could be the direction they want it to go in, you know? It could be looked at as negative to us, but it's positive to someone. You know, I keep hearing this a lot. I hear conservatives and I hear Republicans always say, these governors are dumb or the media is stupid. Asking, it's, I don't think they're dumb or stupid. I think they know exactly what they're doing and they're doing it for whatever reason yeah. they might see yeah, you so know, it going in the direction they want it to go in. Yeah. Well, they what do you think about the, gra the gravy train going. You know, yeah. Like, right. Uh, yep. They don't want that to stop. And... And, you know, a lot of these homeless and people who are, you know, taking advantage of different types of benefits and getting a lot of the money that comes from the state are the ones who are voting them and keeping them in office. So yeah. there is a uh, breaking point for people. You know, Elon Musk, he's like, I don't need the shit. I'll just move the whole plant to Texas. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan he's like, Joe Rogan. I'm just going to go to Austin. I just saw that. You, That's crazy. I, I saw his uh, post and I'm like, wait, he's in Austin? Did he move there? I, I yeah. think he was talking well, yeah, about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a breaking point I for people I'm that I'm like, I, yeah, I know I think I'm next. <laughs> we put it in, we put in, we put in, and there's other states out there that are actively saying, come on. Yeah. Come to Texas. Georgia. Come to I Tennessee. Told, come in all that. Come yeah. to Georgia. Guys, come I, told, to Georgia. I reached out to Isaiah Washington, who's an actor and um, really like his work and really like his, his whole attitude about what things are going on politically. And I reached out to him recently, and I'm like, dude, you ever thought about relocating Georgia? Think about coming to Atlanta. Think about coming to Georgia. There are some downsides, but there's some positives, too. I love our governor. Our governor is the bomb. Brian Kemp, he took a lot of heat for opening yeah. sooner than everyone else and opening up much of the state quicker than Florida did, right. quicker than Texas did. But we haven't had half the issues that they've I mean, had. It, we took, haven't, you it know. did take some ball, I'll give yeah. you that. But there, there's a point where, just like I said at the beginning, the reasons that we were all in California, yeah. you wanted to be in their tainment right. business, no, you wanted a text job, all those, right. those are now spreading out throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, 
is the weather enough to stick around? And a lot of people are like, screw it, I'll just get air conditioning, you know, <laughs> or I'll get heat, or, right. I'll, or I'll get yeah. whatever. Right. Pe people are, are no longer looking for reasons to stay, they're looking for reasons to go, and that has been for the first time in that I've seen that people aren't, and New York went through this too. New York, there was like, I'm never going to leave New York, and then people eventually were like, you know what, this is a hard way to live, I can do better, and they started to look at, you know, Charlotte, and they right. started to look at other places to, to, and I feel that, you know, I don't know where you, I, Heidi, I know you're pretty embedded there, and it's your home state, and all that, but there's a point where you're like, maybe we should just go somewhere else. Oh, yeah, no, I'm already at that point. Like, I just had some <laughs> friends over, and I was talking to them about doing, like, a RV road trip to go through some of these other states that I'm interested in, Texas being one of them and Montana being another. Um, I don't really know a lot about where else I would really want to live, but, I, you know, I like nature and I like beautiful areas and I want to be able to have a good quality of life and... Yeah, um, Mo Montana, you know, Idaho, are, Wyoming, those yeah. are hot spots right now. And a lot of people in those yeah. states are like, do not come to don't our state. Don't bring your California shit with you. Don't bring your California, shit, yeah, with, you. Your California <laughs> shit with right. you. And, and, and so they're sort of, their government are like, oh, we want the revenue. And right. the residents are like, we do not want this in our back. So, <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's a fine line that, that everybody's kind of kind of walk on to find what they want, take care of your family, right. pursue your dreams and all these things that are that are not it's harder. California and Los Angeles in particular, I always say it's a place where no happens. Okay? So, meaning that you you can go, yes, yeah, this is great, good idea, we should do this, whatever, right. and then somewhere along the line there's one no and the dominoes will wipe out all those yeses. Mm. There's there's a lot of struggle. It's very uh, Sisyph Sisyphean? Sisyphus? Who's the one who, f who flew? Is that the one? No, Icarus flew to cross the sun. Sisyphus pushed the rock up the hill. Is that right? Um, who pushed the rock up the hill and right, kept right, rolling right. back? Yeah. Well, somebody a, get a, a dictionary out here. Anyway, speaking a different language. That you really have to do a lot of work to get the life and the lifestyle and the stuff you want. And there's more barriers, I think, in front of you in California than have ever uh, been there. So I still love California. Uh, it's given me a lot of things in life. The, the when it's good, it is the best. It's just yes. not good. It's just not good enough. often enough. Right? Yeah, I agree. Right, and that's kind of what I've been thinking too. I'm just like, is, is it really worth all of this mess? And I'm not sure it is anymore. Uh, all I right. I mean, we we pay over fifty percent in taxes, and um, you know, at my house, just in, you know, we pay the highest state taxes, and mm -hmm. I I pay like thirty five thousand a year in house tax, right? Yeah, and then I also have to pay for my HOA, which is like eight thousand dollars. Some of these other people that live here have much bigger, crazier houses, and they're paying. You have to pay based on the value and size of your house. Right. Which is crazy. So you're, crazy. you're paying a lot of money in and not getting. You're getting a fraction of it back uh, in return. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it, there's it, no protection for people who work and you know put in to our economy here. It's like you know. Um, for example, let's say you own a place and and you let someone um, lease from you. Like the leaser has all the rights. The leaser is the one in the advantage that that has the advantage legally, and you have to pay for everything. And that's yeah. kind of how it goes with everything. Like in California, it's like if you get into an accident with someone, uh -huh. we're gonna pay for them. Well, that, that know, was a if it's an illegal immigrant or if it's someone without insurance or whatever, it's like you end up having to pay if someone breaks into your house and they get hurt. It, or we yeah, get the bill. right. Or if somebody and they had this problem a lot down in uh, down in Newport Beach and in Laguna, they had this where a house would be for sale. Somebody would go in there and like just set up shop. And squat? Start to squat, and they had sort of squatters' rights to the property, <laughs> and the oh, owner yeah. they they had like legal like they took Stop. this. All right, so they're like, no, that person no, lives here, and, wow. and you'd have to spend a we ton of money to, to get them to out the kick, house to kick somebody out. Of that you couldn't just call the cops. They basically had, had oh, it no. was squatters' rights. Yeah, crazy, right? That that happened. I, went, right? I also went through something similar, and it was crazy. We went to a mediation, which is crazy that we even have to mediate. We went to a mediation and asked the guy like. What do you want? First thing he said was, I want to meet Chuck Liddell. I'm like, uh, no, we're not here for that. You know? <laughs> then, then I told the guy, I said, you know what? I said, tell them, tell them to go F themselves. We had to drive three and a half hours to get here for this mediation. Like, what do they really want? And they, they reply with, we want your house. No joke. Yeah, we I want know. your house. 
Uh, and that's well, a real wow. case that we had to fight. So it's I, just, it's crazy. It's not, the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore. Uh, that's why I left. You guys can have I, I know. Well, I'm done. Um, I'm out. That, that's a good transition because uh, we're going to open up our uh, junk drawer here for some, some quick doses. Speaking of Chuck Liddell, your husband got some press for helping defuse a uh, Black Lives Matter rally. I think it was in Huntington Beach. Yeah. Um, or something like that. Yeah. So on that note, this week, a, a the body cam video of the George Floyd um, murder mm -hmm. got uh, got released. And, you know, he shouldn't have died. The officer went too far. Let's just accept all that. Right. However, there's a lot of stuff in that video that it was like, how did the other three cops mm -hmm. act? Did they act? My question isn't guilt or innocence. It's more like... We can't even have that discussion can't out loud. Can't do you that. can't even say like, huh, this isn't. Sort of like when people tried to have the discussion in, in the in the two Georgia ones, mm -hmm. the one where it's like, well, no, he wasn't really jogging. Right. Can we just accept he wasn't right. jogging? <laughs> he was and, running from a house. Right. Literally. He had shouldn't been, die, you know. but you can't. Once you you start like rolling like, well, that's not true, what happened? The, the one also in Atlanta, the Wendy's, where he got, he shot a taser at a cop. My point is, we can't have discussions about that anymore without you being painted as a racist and you, you know Trump and, and all that kind of stuff. It takes on such a political thing, political thing that conversations, if you even raise the questions, yeah, it's crazy. It, it's you're painted it's with crazy. a brush, and we should be That's able right. to have conversations because without the full, complete, honest conversation, I don't think we're getting anywhere. Absolutely, I agree. So what happened down in down in uh, Huntington? Was he trying? What was your husband trying to do? Um, well, we were down there because L.A. is pretty messed up in that you know everyone's extremely liberal and the fear mongering and the everything being shut down. We got like masked Nazis and people like you know turning on their neighbors and like just craziness. You know, like I have a my neighborhood has a neighborhood Facebook private page and mm -hmm. we just had this lady blast um to all the neighbors in front of you know the whole neighborhood saying hey you were walking your dog without a mask like it's crazy so we ended up going and renting a place in huntington which is um where i went to high school and spent a lot of years hanging out at the beach and I, it's just my happy place and um it just so happens that Huntington Beach is very open and everybody is kind of like, you know, beach people, open-minded, mm -hmm. wearing their flip-flops and, and going to the beach. And whether or not there's coronavirus, the sunshine's still there and so is the oh. beach and everybody's like just doing their thing. Um, and Huntington Beach is great because the police and the residents and the business owners have so much respect and appreciation for each other that... Uh, you know, everybody's on the same page. So you have people that are, um, you know, the, like when I was there, the cops said to me, we're not going to get mad at anyone for, you know, having their mask on or not. As long as you're staying socially distant, you guys are fine. And even though they knew that the orders were put in place for no one to be on the beach, they didn't hassle anybody so long as they were socially distant and they weren't causing any problems. And it was just, it was such a great experience and, and such a nice escape for my family. Cause you know, the, the quarantine had really kind of made some depression set in. My kids didn't have a normal life and it was just weird. You know, they couldn't play with their friends and the whole vibe is different there. So we were there for that. And when we heard that there was going to be this BLM protest, um, you know, we got all these, instructions from the uh, person we rented the house from and they're like hey lock your doors and it started to become a whole thing like you know it was going to be a big deal and people could get hurt and that was like the word and um on main street they started boarding up all the businesses and it looked like uh you know i i, I can't even describe to you what it looked minnesota. like minnesota sound like minnesota like yeah <laughs> So anyway, um, you know, the day comes and the morning comes and Chuck's like, I, I'm like, look, you know, you, I'm like, you haven't been working out. You're not in shape. <laughs> <laughs> don't get up. Get, <laughs> and for I'm those like, of you who, do, who don't, who, are, who don't know, Chuck Liddell, uh, if you don't know who he is, MMA legend is Heidi's husband. World class. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, you should not be going out there right now. Like, this, <laughs> you know, and, and Chuck is like, listen, I like, if I'm. I'm here and he's like, you brought me here. Like I stand by idle 
and let people hurt other people or, you know, um, destroy businesses, set stuff on fire. I can't stand by idle because it's just not right, you know, and it, I'm not, tr he's like, trust me, I'll be fine. Of course, I'm like freaking out. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just going to go with him because if I don't go with him, Lord knows what could possibly happen. So mm -hmm. we both go, we, lo we board our kids up. Um, you know, we, uh, we head down to main street and all that stuff starts. And of course, you know, there was a very big group for BLM and a lot of people were bust in and some people were from out of town. It was Amazing. totally organized. I believe, <laughs> yeah. I believe Antifa 100 and I know because I know I talked to some people who are out there that they were paying them $50 an hour to do what they were doing, which is more than anybody's making right now, more than I'm making, more than Chuck's making, more than anybody's making. Like who's making $50 an hour? Right. Crazy. You know? Um, uh, like yeah, we, you you're know, right. So. That's the problem. It went from we really collectively need to be able to have open and honest and productive conversations. Mm -hmm. And it went to a violent place. It went mm -hmm. to a political place. Mm -hmm. It went to um, Republican Democrat mm -hmm. place. It went to fun. It went to it went all to these to other get things. Out of it went to place. defund the police. <laughs> you bring up. We brought up Los Angeles. The schools now they won't go back unless the police are defunded, which has nothing to do with the health of the children. Crazy. And even as a as a black man, you can't have you can't raise the no. same questions either. It's I'm in the same situation you're in, or she's in, or whoever. You can't have these questions. I I was talking to John about this before we came in. You, there's certain things you can't have a discussion about. It triggers people. It gets people angry. It gets them wanting to fight. And you can't yeah. solve anything because you can't You're even have a... with a brush yeah, right away. Immediately. If you even I'm uh, a coon. bring they, it up. They call you a racist. They'll yeah. call me a coon or a sellout or Uncle Tom. It's crazy. It, it, it's terrible. It's Everybody crazy. keeps saying we need yeah, to have these conversations and we yeah. can't yeah. have... Let's have a debate. Okay? Yeah. Let's have a discussion. What's that, Heidi? How is that okay at all? I, I, I how don't is know. it okay to call another black man a coon? Like, how is that not racist? I just, I don't understand. That I, mentality, I, I, like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it, it just makes me so mad. I, because it's like, that's exactly what you're doing is being racist when you make a statement like that. And you're being a bully on top of it. You're the being message intolerant. gets muddled. The agendas get confused. It becomes about something else and we don't really get anywhere. All right. Here's another one for you. This is a little more fun, a little easier for you. We'll start with you, Heidi. Give me a big problem that you think you could solve if we handed you the keys. Anything. A big if, problem with, like... In, in um, life, or, society, California, something that you're like, you know what, I know how to figure that out, they just won't let me figure that out. I have a solution. Is there a big societal ooh, or, or political or, or parenting or any kind of problem that you're like, you know what, I think I could figure this one out. Give me the, give me the magic wand. Um, well, I think one thing, um, for this new generation of like screaming, bumbling fools that, uh, you know, <laughs> are showing up at all these protests and are walking on all these college campuses and just, you know, coming out with some of the dumbest stuff you've ever heard. I think that the simple answer to that issue is travel the world, go somewhere else, leave California go to another place that you think you know stuff about and learn about these countries. Like so many people who are in our system, it's almost like our education system got turned into something built to dumb us down. And our kids right now, I was watching um, this video earlier. They don't, they know who the Kardashians are, mm -hmm. but they don't know who other um, you know, what countries are communists and what socialism mm -hmm. means. And, and I think that, um, you know, I've talked to a few other friends that are, ha that are immigrants here that love America. And mm -hmm. they're, they're literally like so frustrated and they're saying like, I wish I was a citizen. I love living here. Um, I appreciate my life. And the ones who have become citizens, like they think it's the best country in the world and they've escaped from their country yeah. for the freedom that we have to live the way we do. And I've done a lot of traveling in my time and, and yeah. I am the child of an immigrant. I'm the child of two immigrants. My mother is Vietnamese from Vietnam. Uh -huh. Like, you know, she ran from a war torn country. I, I, I grew up on food stamps. I grew, grew up on welfare. I grew up with a single mom with, you know, on the street with tons of, 
um, like just horrible stuff that I experienced growing up, lots of abuse. I can identify with a lot of these people who are right. struggling, but, um, I feel like people just don't really, they're not educated about what's going on anymore. And, and we're just like our attention span, these young children, like, like my daughter, it's 15 seconds because of the vine and because of all this stuff they, and they're, they're learning through the 15 seconds or the 45 seconds. And they're not learning anything that makes any sense. But meanwhile, they can give you every detail about yeah. the Kardashians. You're right. Who's, you who, would, so you would fix you would fix education through travel, and that's a good point. The amount of money that yeah. it costs to take your three kids to Disneyland or mm -hmm. Disney World, you could go to a foreign country and give them just a better time yeah. and uh, some value. That's and a, a good better one. education. And a better education. What would you do if you're like, here's the keys, change the world somehow? Wow. One thing. One thing. Mm. If you're like, I think I could make this better. <sighs> wow. That's a serious question. I don't know. That's, I know, that's, so right, that's weird, more serious right? than it, last, the last. It could, be, it could be serious or it could be like, you know, I can figure out how we do fast food better. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, you don't have a, an idea that you're like, I just don't have the power to do this. I think I have an idea of how, I mean, this is, this is, you know, I'm yep. glad you asked the yeah. question because it's a deep question for mm -hmm. me because I do think deeply about these types mm -hmm. of things. I think I could solve the problem of uh, we have these dilapidated ish, uh, uh, communities mm -hmm. in the inner city. Mm -hmm. I think if you gave me the power, I could literally solve those problems probably overnight. And I think wow. I think the black community could solve a lot of these problems. I don't think we need just like big the government. Uh, yeah. You know, we just need leadership, and we need people who are really about making change. And not the talking, not the grandstanding or the virtue signaling. All I right. think if you hey, really if, were engaged we just, more, I'm sorry. What if we What if we took all the money that was being donated to BLM and funneled it into those inner cities, just like cut, you said, to someone, that, that's, to that's that's someone one way like of doing yourself. it. Cut that's out, one way of doing like it. Cut out the middleman. That's one way of doing it. I think that we can we can uh, raise a lot of money, close a lot of budget deficits, cut a lot of taxes. If we took naming rights to a higher level, meaning what do they pay for a Legion Stadium down here down the road? You know, oh, wow. what, yeah, would, what would you for somebody pay if like that's George Washington has enough stuff named after him? The GW Bridge in New York, if that was the Taco Bell Bridge, or the uh, and people <laughs> will get used to it. Times Square is named after the New York Times. Right. You know, people Wrigley Field. It becomes part of the fabric of the city. There's a lot of beach. There's a lot of public stuff that we could plaster naming rights on a civic level. Companies would pay a ton of money for bridges, tunnels, parks, whatever, presented by Frito-Lay. Whatever. You could be subtle with it or not. We're already used to that happening. You're not really bastardizing anything. It is a ton of revenue. Rather than direct, you know, corporations don't like paying taxes because they're not getting anything for it. That's advertising. I would sell every square inch of Central Park to Nike or somebody. They would pay. Yeah. It. It's a lot of That's money. That's a great idea. That's a good things. one. All right. When I run for uh, mayor of something, oh, I, I will do that. I, I have Go one ahead. more idea. Go ahead, Heidi. I think that right now, one of the biggest things that would solve a lot of our problems as a nation is if we held the mainstream media accountable um, financially and in all liability for the um, wreaking the havoc that they are causing and for destroying people's lives the way they are or inciting violence, inciting um, protests uh, and, and things that are costing our way of life, they should be yeah. responsible because the journalism and what's going on is not responsible, real journalism anymore. It's, it's very, um, uh, there's an agenda in place and yeah. it's not. I agree with you a hundred percent, hundred percent. We should be taxing churches too. Their businesses. They were able to get small business loans or large business wow. loans out of the new thing. You know, all the ch Catholic Church got like a billion dollars in loans. Uh, you know, that's okay. A, that's a thing. That's okay. Absolutely. Uh, I mentioned Uber earlier. Um, in 10 years, our primary mode of transportation will be what? Because I don't think kids are going to be buying cars in 10 years. What do you think we're going to be doing? You think we're going to be walking? You think we're going to be public transportation? You think we're going to be driving our own cars? What do you think is... Uh, I don't think a six-year-old now is ever going to own a car. You don't? No. no. 
No. No. I don't think what so. What about like um, Jetson style, the hover? Yeah, well, see, we've been waiting like for Jetson style for 40 years. I don't think that that's going to happen I don't think that's happening. We've been waiting for that for a while. We have been waiting. It should yeah. be here by now. It should but, have been here by but now. The but the leaps that technologies have, like, I don't think a lot of kids don't buy cars. Right. Now. Kids, I mean, not even kids, like t- millennials. A lot of them just don't own cars anymore. And they move to cities that have public transportation or have a good Uber system or whatever. And that's another thing. Uber changed Los Angeles, uh, and it because a lot of people would move there because they could go out at night because right. I could take an Uber and I wouldn't have to pay for valet and I wouldn't have to do all these things. Take that away; it's a problem. But do you think we're gonna mostly move into a public transportation thing, even though most people are now leaving cities? Like that's, that's the, the thing, thing about it. a lot of people move into the the They're burbs. They're to the burbs, and, and they don't get around. So, a lot of people don't buy don't cars. Know. I don't know any thoughts on that because that came up to me today. It's like because I I was talking to somebody at a seven year old. They're like, he'll never own a car. They don't even mm. think about that. No, you're right. One in, you're right. Hi, how old are your kids, Heidi? Uh, I have seven, eight, and 19. Seven, eight, and 19. Does the 19-year-old have a car? Probably, right? She does. Okay. Yeah, she does. Because uh, a lot of kids, like the seven-year-old, are they going to get a driver's license or they're just going to, or Elon Musk will have tunnels by that? I don't right. know. You're People asking a so. question. If you had asked me in, in, in February, yeah. will Major League <laughs> Baseball not be playing and basketball not be playing? Will we all be stuck in a house uh, yeah, I know. for two or three months? It's a different world now. I mean, so I, uh, in projecting so that far, I'm well, trying to get past the election. I, I get that, but people aren't commuting anymore, so people yeah. have to rethink this. All right, this is one good one for you, Heidi. A place that you have never lived, but you think, that's a good place to live. I would try that out. Could be anywhere in the world. That you're like, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't mind um, living there. Oh gosh, um, that's a good question. You yeah, know, that's good um, question. recently I went to Vietnam, and um, I was born in the U.S. My uh-huh. mom came here from Vietnam, so that. Like, I kind of connected with Vietnam in a different way, which I thought was awesome. And, you know, um, everybody's, like, real happy there. The economy was booming there. They was. like Americans. I, mean, I know. Yeah. I know COVID has changed a lot of things for a lot of different countries. But, um, but I mean, where would I go live? Um, I mean, I would try living there for a little bit just because it'd be Good. fun. But um, That's a good I answer. Vietnam be nice. London. Yeah. I've always wanted to live in London, to be honest with you. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, my I've always wanted London to. London is amazing. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. And right now, I feel so bad for them because they're on complete lockdown. Well. They don't know when they're coming out. My, they, <laughs> yeah. My answer to this question was Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne, Australia. I thought it's was the greatest oh, place on the world. Awesome. They're totalitarian. Like, they have it to together. They figure out. I know. <laughs> they are so extreme that I'm wow. like. I thought everybody in the world was so welcoming right. to go to Melbourne, and then they locked it down. So I'm like, oh, my God, my dream city is taken away. Uh, i got to rethink it. All right, final question, Heidi. This is what we always ask somebody. I was wrong about blank. Something in your life that you either said, thought, believed, that it turned out you were wrong about. Um, what was I wrong about? Um... Could be a bad hair color. You thought you'd be a, a redhead. Didn't work out. Anything. <laughs> oh, um, an ex-boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I, I was wrong That's always about, a good one. I was wrong about dating Jose Canseco in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not the only woman I mean, in uh, Los Angeles who said really, that, too. Really, I was really young and dumb, so I was definitely wrong. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. And that's a warning that's a good um, one. for all you people out there. Don't date Jose Canseco. No. Yeah, you know. No. Good. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jose Canseco. That's a good answer. We like that. That's a good one. I ask you this every time. Yeah. You got another one? Yeah. Something you were wrong uh, about. We were just speaking about this 15, 20 minutes ago. Los Angeles. Oh. I moved out to L.A. thinking it was the bomb diggity. Mm-hmm. You know, and then six years into it, uh, I was ready to leave. Really? Yeah. I was over it. It it worn out its welcome. It yeah. was cool going down to the beach and being able to go down the Pacific Coast mm-hmm. Highway and hang out in Malibu and do all these events and all these parts. After a while, it just got a little stale, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that I just wasn't L.A. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You just some people just some people are not LA. You you find people leaving Detroit or leaving yeah. whatever city and they go make make it in LA. I, I I'm not what, LA. I don't know what the stat is. Three thousand people come there every day and three thousand people leave. I've heard a million people have left. They've given well, they statistics. Come wherever, but every single leaving, day, you know, people come there yeah. with a dream, mm-hmm. and a lot of people. Go back home to wherever they came from. And a lot of people come to Las Vegas. <laughs> so I like there, Vegas so now. Vegas is Vegas, right. That's what I was wrong yeah. about. I said I could never live in Las Vegas. And uh, other than these 37 days a year where you could just burn the shit out of yourself for touching degrees, the wrong 113 thing. 113 degrees. Uh, Vegas is a nice place to live. Uh, anyway, thank you, Heidi. Stay safe. Thank Thanks, you Heidi. so much. This was awesome. Yes. This was awesome. This uh, was thanks awesome. For having me on. You were great. Thank you, London. Uh, as far as us, like, share, subscribe, and please review Political Junkies. Uh, all of your feedback means a lot in the uh, podcasting ecosystem. Um, until next time, uh, join us for another fix on Political Junkies.